Hi there. I've given this video the title Rearranging Equations or Not. And hopefully, after watching the video, you'll realise exactly why I've given it that title. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with an example question. That question says, calculate the weight of a 50 kilograms mass on Earth. Now, don't worry if you don't know this equation. The equation actually to use is W, which is weight, is equal to M mass times gravitational field strength. Now, at the very start of the exam, just after the, the first page where you write your name and SCN number, is the data sheet. And within that data sheet, it gives you the value of this G, which is gravitational field strength, and that's 9.8. So we know mass is 50. We know that G is 9.8. And to calculate our final answer, we just multiply 50 times 9.8. And hopefully... And that'll give us this, 490 newtons. Now, for a video on rearranging, we've done none so far. But that's all about to change. In the second question, which looks very similar, and says an object's weight is measured to be 147 newtons on Earth. Calculate the object's mass. Now, here, we're going to use exactly the same equation. And again, G from the data sheets is 9.8 newtons per kilogram. So... Let's see, I'm going to just clear that calculator and write the equation like so. Now, no matter how you're going to actually, I guess, answer the questions, whether you're going to rearrange the equation or before you rearrange, you actually substitute the values, I would always say, even though you actually know the equation, look at the relationship just to make sure that you're writing it the correct way. Sometimes you can make a mistake and write one letter uppercase when it should be lowercase and so on. Sometimes that can be quite significant. So the equation is W is equal to mg. If you're not overly happy rearranging equations, even after watching this video, then what I would suggest is just to put the numbers that you know into this equation without rearranging. If you didn't know, this is actually a three mark question. You get one mark for the equation one mark for substituting the values and one for the final answer with a unit. So just writing the equation, even though I actually will have to rearrange this at some stage because it's mass that I want to find, I would suggest just writing the equation as is. And that way you will get one mark for that. If you then put in the values, so I shouldn't have a, an equals there, I'll get rid of that. So I'll just put in the values. Weight we know is 147. And that's equal to, now it's mass that I want to find. So I don't know mass. So I'm just going to write M. And it's multiplied by 9.8. Now just doing that, just doing that substitution, I've gotten another mark. So I've gotten two out of three. I'll need to rearrange at this stage. If I do it wrongly though, at least I've gotten two out of three. How I actually do rearrange the equation is I want to find M is equal to, now mass at the moment is being multiplied by 9.8. To get mass on its own, I need to do the opposite of multiplication and that's obviously division. So I'd want to divide the right hand side by 9.8. But if I'm dividing that right hand side by 9.8, I'll need to divide this side by 9.8. And that gives me mass is equal to 147 divided by 9.8. So M is 147 divided by 9.8 and that gives me, let's calculate, 147 divided by 9.8 is 15 kilograms. And as long as I've done that correctly, the final answer with the unit gives me the third mark. Now, if you are more confident rearranging equations, then... I would still say write the equation as is in the relationship sheet first. If it's mass that I want to find, now just as before, when mass was multiplied by 9.8, I had to divide that by 9.8. Here I've got mass is multiplied by G. So the opposite of multiplication is division. I want to divide the right hand side by G, which means I need to divide W by G. And that gives me, therefore, M is equal to W over G. And W, the weight, was 147. G was 9.8. And that gives me exactly the same number because it's the same sum as here. So it's going to be 15 
kilograms. There we have it. Now this is an equation with three terms. One term on the left hand side, two terms multiplied on the right hand side. Here are some similar equations. And I just wanted to go through two of them. So we'll start with this equation here. P is equal to I times V. Again, don't worry if you don't know what P, I or V are. But if you're working out P, which is actually power, then you wouldn't need to rearrange this equation at all. It would just be P is equal to current I multiplied by voltage V. If, however, you had to rearrange this equation, say, to find I, and that's current, then we would have I is equal to, at the moment, I is being multiplied by V. So to find I on its own, I divide that side by V. And because of that, I'd have to divide this by V as well. So I'd get I is equal to P divided by V. Remember again, you don't have to rearrange the equation itself. You could just write the equation, substitute the values, but then you would have to rearrange at that stage. It's completely up to yourself. The last thing we can do is we can work at V. So if I was working at V, again, V is being multiplied by I. So to get V on its own, I'd have to divide by I. So that means I have to divide this by I. So that gives me V is P over I. There we have it. Now, slightly more difficult is this equation here. P is equal to I squared R. So let's write that one here. P is equal to I squared R. Move that up. Now, again, if you're working at power P, then this would just be current is I, I squared times R. You need to remember to square the value of current. But if I wanted to work out, let's say we'll work at resistance first. That's probably easier. So resistance is equal to, well, what I would need to do is I need to divide by I squared because at the moment R is being multiplied by I squared. So I'd divide by I squared to get rid of the I squared there. And I'd need to divide this side by I squared as well. So R is equal to P over I squared. If I wanted to find I itself, well, the first thing I would do is to work at I squared, and that would be I squared is equal to, so again, I squared is being multiplied by R. So I want to get rid of the multiplication. So it's being multiplied by R at the moment, so I divide by R, and I'd need to divide this side by R. So I squared is equal to P over R. So what I would do at that stage is I would probably just substitute the values. Now let's just make up some values and say that P was a power of 80 watts and resistance is five ohms, completely made up. So that would give me, of course, that I squared is equal to 80 over five. What is that? 80 divided by five. I'm pretending that I've not made up this question and worked it out before. So I squared would be 16 and therefore, I itself would be the square root of 16, which would be 4 amps. There we have it. Now, what you could have done, possibly, is if you knew I squared was P over R, what I could have done just to find I is I could have done basically a square root on the left-hand side and take the square root of the right-hand side. So if I squared is P over R, I is equal to the square root of p over r. Whichever method you use, obviously use the one that you're most comfortable with. Let's look at some other equations. So these are similar equations, except I've got three terms on the right-hand side. Now, start with this one, and it's a very similar method that we're using. Move up again and over. So we'll start with that first equation, as I said. EH is actually heat energy, and that's equal to C, specific heat capacity, multiplied by M, which is mass. Delta T means change in temperature. Now, if I'm working at heat again, no rearranging, but let's say I had to work at C. So if I had to work at C, C is equal to, well, at the moment, C is being multiplied by M and multiplied by delta T. So I want to divide this side by M delta T to give me just C on its own. 
So if I'm dividing by m delta t to get rid of it, I need to divide this side by m delta t. So that gives me c is equal to e h over m delta t. If I wanted to work out delta t, then delta t is equal to, at the moment, delta t is being multiplied by cm. So divide that side by cm. I'd need to divide this side by cm. So delta t is equal to eh over cm. Now what's the last thing I've not worked out? That's m. So move this over and that would be m is equal to, and hopefully this all makes sense. If it's, if it's not, then I'm, I'm thinking of making another video where I go through lots of equations and you can basically follow that, that video as I'm working it out. So just to see that you're getting the same answer as me. So m is being multiplied by c and it's being multiplied by delta t. So I need to divide this side by c delta t. And that would give me m is eh over, remember I'm dividing to get m on its own by c delta t. So that would divide by c delta t. There we have it. I'm going to go over just one last equation like so, at least one in this form. Then I'm going to talk about a different type of equation. So this equation, ek is half mv squared. And again, give myself a little bit more space. So ek is kinetic energy, and that's equal to half times mass times uh, velocity squared. Now, again, if I'm working at kinetic energy, there's no rearranging to do at all. If I want to work out, let's say I want to work at mass, then I would have mass m is equal to, at the moment, mass is being multiplied by half v squared. So I want to get rid of the half v squared by dividing this by half v squared, which means I'd need to divide this by half v squared. So mass is just ek over half v squared. There you have it. If I want to work at v, then at the moment I've got v squared. In fact, I'll work at v squared first. v squared is equal to, now v squared is being multiplied by half m. So I want to get rid of that half m by dividing by half m, but I'm going to have to divide ek by half m. So v squared is ek over half m. And just as before, what we could do is we could work at v squared first, which is, you know, you would substitute these values, work out what that number, you know, what that answer is, and then take the square root. I'm going to show you one last type of equation, and that's what you could call a division equation, where on the left-hand side we've got one term, and on the right-hand side we've got two terms being divided. We'll start with this one here. P is E over T. It's another power equation. So, as I said, sometimes you'll see in some textbooks that they're using what's called an equation triangle. And these e equations are very simple to put into equation triangles. But I really don't want to be showing you that method because as you progress with physics, there will be other equations where you can't use equation triangles and you'll just become completely lost. So it's just as well at the start to use this method, what's called the balanced approach. Now, if I'm working out power again, no rearranging, just divide the energy by the time. If, however, I'm working at energy, well, that's fairly straightforward. Energy is equal to, well, at the moment, energy is being divided by time. So I want to do the opposite of division. I want to multiply. So I want to multiply the right-hand side by T to get rid of that division by T. So that'll give me energy on this side, but I'd need to do exactly the same on the left-hand side. I'd need to multiply it by T. So that give me energy is equal to P, which is power, times T, which is time. And finally, to give me time, what I would need to do, in fact, probably the easiest way is just to do the same as I've just done there. Multiply both sides by T. So if I multiply the left-hand side by T, that'll give me PT. And if I multiply this side by T, well, at the moment, energy is divided by time. If I multiply that by t, I just get e on its own. So it gives me pt is equal to e 
and therefore to get time on its own, I would divide this side by P. So divide that by P and I get T on its own. So that would give me T is equal to, so I'm dividing this side by P to get rid of the letter P. I want to divide this side by P, that gives me energy over power. I could do one more and we'll do this one here. So move up again. Oh, I've run out of paper. My goodness. So let's see, I've got P is equal to V squared over R. Now that's power voltage squared over resistance. Now, if we're panicking, there are lots and lots of equations. You get given them all anyway. So the, there will be the relationship sheet where you're given the equations. Now the scale of course is that you need to know what all of these different letters represent. So you need to know that power is, what well, P is power and that's in watts, V is voltage and that's in volts and R is resistance in ohms. There is a sheet and I go over to this in one of the videos as well where I've written down what all the different symbols are in the equations and I've written all the units. So see if you can find that one because that's the most important scale. If you don't know what each of the letters mean then you'll find it very difficult getting the right equation. So let's see, if again I want to find P, then I would just, you know, there'd be no rearranging. I would just divide voltage squared by resistance. Let's say I wanted to find voltage squared and therefore find voltage. It would be V squared is equal to, well again this side, the right hand side is being divided by R. So I want to do the opposite of division. I want to multiply by R to get rid of that over R. So multiply the right hand side by R. I want to multiply this left hand side by R. So that'll give me V squared is equal to P times R. Now, if I wanted to be very clever, I could take the square root of both sides. So at the moment I've got V squared is PR. So that would give me V is equal to the square root of PR. And finally, if I want to find R, then I guess what I could do is multiply this side by R again. And that would give me PR so as I said, multiply the right, well, sorry, multiply the left hand side by R gives me PR. Multiplying the right hand side by R gets rid of this division by R. So that'll give me V squared. So P times R is equal to V squared. Now at this point, R is being multiplied by P. So to get rid of that multiplication, I want to divide the left hand side by P and I'll need to divide the right hand side by P and that'll give me therefore R is equal to V squared over P. So there we have it. That's actually covered most of the equations within the relationship sheet. Now there are other equations which are rearranged using different methods like cross multiplication. But what I'll do is I'll cover them in the next video. That's us for now then. We'll see you later.